Hey, hi. So this is my first time doing a video with a voiceover. So if you're listening to this right now, it means both that I successfully recorded and survived listening to my own voice uh, while editing. So congratulations, mostly to me, but to you also. As the title states, I painted a hundred cats. Here they all are. Hundred. Um, I wanted to do a hundred day challenge to get back into painting. So the original goal was to do a painting every day for a hundred days. Uh, it took me about a year and a half to finish this. Not a hundred days. Um, I stopped and started for a lot of various reasons, um, but I finished. I'm really proud of myself. Um, why cats? I like them. I wanted to pick something that I knew I could maintain my interest in doing a hundred of them, um, and I didn't feel so intimidated by doing a hundred of them. I already draw a lot of cats. I felt pretty confident in my ability to depict a cat. Um, so that's what I picked. And they're all shelter cats. I got all of the reference photos from Pet Finder. Um, and so hopefully most of them have been adopted by now because some of them, it's been a year since I painted them. Um, but yeah, they're all special cats. Let's talk about supplies. There have been a few questions on my Instagram while I was doing it about what I'm using. Um, these are almost all on just sort of the cheapest pad of mixed media paper I got from Michaels or whatever. I don't know the brand, unfortunately. There's a couple in there that are on like a nicer watercolor paper. And it would have been nice to do them all on that, but I only had a few pieces. I used largely, I think m most of them ended up being all in acrylic, although there's a lot of them, I think, especially in the beginning, that are a mix of acrylic and gouache, and then I went to exclusively gouache for a while and then went back to acrylic. Um, when I say gouache, I use this Hemi Jelly Gouache. That seems to be pretty popular on YouTube. I'm not going to open it because they're all dried out and it's really gross and embarrassing, but you've seen what they look like. Um, and then as far as acrylics, I started out just like using whatever I had and I have like a huge amount of random tubes of paint I've accumulated over the years. But I, since I also like using color pencils, I ended up eventually doing a test. I don't know how well you can see them. To see like which acrylics I had would allow me to layer the pencils over the best because as you can see some of them are like no thank you not at all and then some of them you can really layer the pencils over. Um, acrylics I've found are really variable and I don't know if it's just a brand thing or like a price point thing because actually some of the like higher price point acrylics like this Liquitex heavy body which is much more expensive than you know artist loft paints yeah um, some of them are more sticky like plasticky and some of them are a lot more chalky um, and I found that I prefer a chalky acrylic to a thicker plasticky acrylic because it allows me to layer pencils over. Um, so what I settled on mostly when I eventually did the full switch was these Artist Loft acrylics, academic level one. I think they're the cheapest option from Michaels. I think it's the Michaels brand Artist Loft. And then also, surprising to me, but I was impulse buying these little two ounce craft acrylic tubes from Target because they're just cute. And these turned out to work really well for me too. So I don't know, 
Seems like the cheap paint I like more. The same thing with pencils. I have just, I don't know, a million pencils. Most of them are Crayola, some of them are Prismacolor, some of them are whatever. So I ended up using, just figuring out whichever ones worked. And it also seems to vary on the color, but the most consistent pencils I have for layering over the paint are these Derwent pencils, Color Soft and Intense. Are you gonna focus? Yeah. These ones. And they're actually, um, unfortunately, kind of more expensive, but most of the ones I got were like in this clearance bin at Joanne Fabrics. So check your Joanne Fabrics. You might find some there. Um, the other ones that worked okay, mostly for the Faber Castells. Yeah. These ones it seems to do pretty well. And then the Prismas do well too. Crayola is really hit and miss. Like some of the colors work really well and some of them don't. So I don't know. Just experiment is my advice on that. Anyway, let's get into the cats. So the first one, I actually really still like the first one, which is kind of unusual for me in my temperament. I'm kind of the person that's like, as soon as I create a piece of art and I walk away and have lunch and come back, I hate it. But I don't hate this. I think it's still really cute. I think it's much more obvious to me now that I started this project trying to sort of like force myself to create like a certain aesthetic like, I draw realistic animals, but I also draw cartoony animals. And I think I started with this goal of trying to like, have a style and stick to it. Um, and I very quickly didn't, which was one of the things I learned is that you really can't force yourself into a certain style if you are gonna be creating a lot of art. Um, Whatever your style is going to be will just happen while you're working. So I still think it's really cute, um, but it's definitely kind of an artificial style. The second one is kind of the same thing. Um, I tried to stick to the style. Uh, it's got, you know, not a lot of detail and I definitely I don't know, it's just the same thing. It's cute though. <laughs> By day three, I was already having trouble sticking to the prescribed style. Um, it's still that sort of like light watercolor look, but you can tell like this cat's a little less stylized. He's a little more realistically proportioned. Um, it's cute though, I like it. I initially had a lot of trouble in the first quarter to the first half, I'd say, painting anything that was dark colors, you know, like brown cats and black cats. I really didn't understand how to do that without it looking kind of silly. I still think this looks okay, but you can tell I kind of just gave up around certain areas of it and there's not a lot of variation in the color of the fur, um, but it's fine, it's good. Let's see, look at this one, a little bit of trouble. Um, I think it was because I was trying so hard to stick to the style I started out with that I was like not willing to paint any different variable colors within the black fur. I was like, well, it's black fur, so it's all gonna be black or dark blue in this case. And then tried to layer the pencils over the top to make more dimension. Um, I don't think it's bad, but I, I don't love it. Uh, this is one of the ones on the nicer paper. 
So I don't know, it took, you know, the gouache is more watercolory and that looks kind of nice. Um, I think I also use like a Posca pin sometimes for the whiskers and such. Um, I mean, it's fine, but I don't do that anymore, I guess. This is the first one I really <laughs> struggled with posting. Um, that was also one of my goals for this project was to just do the hundred and post them and not scrap any and start over or hide them away or archive the posts um, because I'm trying to get over the impulse to think my art is ugly and hide it away. Um, but yeah, I don't love this picture. You can see again, I was struggling to like stay within the confines of what I decided my style was, but also um, it just looks really, I mean, it's still cute, but it's just, it's so different than where I ended up. Um, this one, you can tell I kind of started to play around with color anymore, because obviously white isn't always white, black isn't always black, so there's a fair amount of like little colors in the fur, but I don't know how successful it was. Um, this was kind of going back to the softer, more pastel sort of look. Again, you can kind of already see like, well, maybe they're not that different. I don't know. I feel like they look really different, but maybe they don't look that different yet. This cat it was like a, a cataract or something, so that was kind of fun to paint. Really cute. This one I'm also not a big fan of. I feel like sometimes I rushed my drawing phase and then just started painting over it, and I'm the kind of person that unfortunately needs to have a pretty solid drawing under my painting, um, or else. I'll get proportions wrong and it'll just go in a weird direction. Um, sometimes I'm able to correct it. I'm a little better at correcting it now, but in this case, I feel like the drawing could have used more work before I carried on. This one, whatever this color I mixed, I really like. That's all. Cat. I don't know if I'm gonna have a lot to say about all of these, but I'd be interested to go back and count like how many of these are calicos versus not because I'm very partial to calicos so there's I feel like disproportionately a lot in there this is another one I kind of struggled with posting I feel like another thing I would do sometimes is because I knew I was also going to use pencils I would give up on the painting long before I should have. Um, so I would just lay down like one sad layer of paint and then be like, oh, I'll just fix it with pencils. I think in this case, I was struggling with knowing how to mix a competent brown. So instead of taking the time to figure out how to mix a brown, I just used color pencil. Um, and I think, you know, the end product is it still looks cute, but. I just think of how I wish I would have learned how to mix paint. Another calico. This one definitely looks like another situation where I did not spend very much pa time painting. Um, you can tell the paint is very thin. And I think that's one of the reasons I eventually moved away from the gouache is because the way I've been using it is very sort of thin and washy um, and it just gets to the point where it doesn't for me build up like any sort of richness and so it looks pretty washed out and then instead of painting with thicker paint um, I would just go over it with the colored pencils so it's like at what point is it no longer a painting I don't know it's hard to tell This is another one where I 
realized I had fallen off of the tracks of trying to follow my original style aesthetic that I had set for myself and was like, oh no, I'm falling into the trap of trying to make them look realistic. I better make them look not realistic so I have like a discernible style again. Um, so this one I definitely tried to make it a little more, I don't know, graphic, cartoony? I don't know what the term is, but I enjoyed doing it. It was fun. I like it. But it was funny because when I posted this, I was like, oh, this is the style now. They're all going to be like this because they're faster and easier to paint. And then almost immediately, I did not continue to follow that. Because like I said, that's the thing I learned is that you can't really force yourself, or at least I can't force myself to stay within the confines of a style. And I used to think it was like really bad that my art seems so inconsistent, but I don't know, I think it's fine. I think it just means I'm experimenting and trying new things every time. I mean, I've never sat down and painted a hundred paintings in a row before and I think towards the end they become a little bit more co cohesive. I think there is still variation, but I think people that have a very consistent painting style have been painting a lot very consistently, consistently for a very long time. Um, and I'm realizing I haven't really. <laughs> I've been painting, you know, for a lot of my life, but like not a lot, I guess, is what I learned. Cute. This is one I struggled with posting because I think the drawing is not good. Um, there's a cross-eyed cat. Cross-eyed cats are cute. I think you can or at least I can tell that I got frustrated because it's another one of those ones where I gave up on the painting early and just tried to fix it by drawing on top. This one I remember being pretty proud of when I finished it because I actually semi-attempted to paint the black fur in a way that looks a little better than that other black cat was. Um, Looking back on it now, I think I've learned a lot more, but at the time I was pretty proud of it. I remember, and I think I still am, this is when I first started paying like a little more attention um, to their eyes and adding a little more dimension. I remember being pretty proud of kind of how lifelike this one's eyes looked. This one's still one of my favorites. I don't know why, it's just cute. And I think I successfully put like some dimension in the white fur. All right, so this is where I started falling off a little bit. Up until this point, I was pretty consistent doing these almost every day. Sometimes I'd skip a day here and there, here and there but I was really consistent. Um, this is where I started having bigger gaps. I don't know if I was burnt out doing it or if I just had other stuff going on in my life that made me feel overwhelmed and not want to do it. Um, I'm unfortunately, or I have been up to this point, a pretty <laughs> emotionally based artist. Like if I am not at all, I have to be in a mood <laughs> to be able to sit down to draw or paint which is kind of annoying to me because I wish I could just do it anyway. And to some point doing this project, I was able to get into that groove of just doing it anyway and it still turned out good most of the time, but I don't know, sometimes I just get in a mood and I don't want to draw a paint for like a week, a month, six months, I don't know. Um, so these are when I started having a little more of a gap, but kind of interesting to me is sometimes taking a break led to kind of like a jump in, I don't know if it's skill really, or just, I don't know, taking a break 
broke kind of the cycle of trying to stick to a certain style. And so sometimes during um, the biggest gaps is where randomly there would be what I would consider the biggest improvement. So maybe there's a lesson in that too. If you are frustrated with your art, just stop doing it for a little while and then do it again. I, I'm, I can't give you professional advice, but maybe. This guy's pretty cute. I think he's the only one with an open mouth because, I don't know, I was scared of drawing teeth. This is maybe around where I started to get really frustrated with the gouache. I don't know, it just feels... It was just starting to feel kind of dull. And I know that's kind of my fault, I suppose, for not mixing pretty colors, but it's also, I don't know, the certain sort of chalkiness of it was not working for me. Um, so yeah, between this one and this one, it's almost two weeks off. I mean, they're not significantly different, but... This cat's name was Baby Biscuit. I just thought you needed to know because look at Baby Biscuit. This one I'm not a big fan of. Again, I think the drawing could have used more work. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see like Looking back, I feel like I can tell whenever my drawing wasn't quite up to snuff, like, I can tell I was more frustrated. Like, I can look at this and tell I was frustrated and kind of gave up. Um, so that's something cool I learned. Guy, I don't know why I didn't paint all the way to the corner. This painting, I don't like it. I didn't like it when I did it. I don't like it now. It was painful for me to post it. It's painful for me to leave it on my Instagram. I feel like it looks like that painting that somebody tried to restore that painting of Jesus or whatever, and it looks terrible. There was a meme about it, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I feel like it looks like that. All the love to this cat. Wonderful cat, great cat. Wish I didn't paint a terrible, bad Jesus painting of you. I'm so sorry. This one, I think this might be where I started kind of focusing on doing underpaintings. But a lot of them, like in the very beginning, I don't think I did an underpainting at all. I think I just went into the raw white paper and started painting on it. But then I started doing a ground of, you know, sort of a light orange or whatever. Actually, what I settled on in the end was bright pink. But like, I think this one was sort of a blue underpainting. And I don't know, I kept trying to make blue work and it just made the whole painting blue, which I don't love. This guy, look at him. Um, I feel like this is kind of the point where you can see I'm kind of loosening up a little bit. Not, not so much struggling anymore. So it took like, I don't know, almost half the way through the hundred paintings to like feel comfortable doing them, which is a lesson in and of itself that like, I don't know, you just got to keep going because eventually It'll stop feeling really bad to do. Um, this was when I did it my favorite and it's still one of my favorites. Um, I went in there with that like hot pink underpainting. I don't know, I really like it when the pink puts, is through. Um, yeah, a grumpy looking calico, like my own. Um, this one I think had like an orange underpainting and good too.
this one might be one of my favorites too because I mean, because it's a calico, I guess. This one I'm not a huge fan of, I think because I didn't push myself hard enough to do more cats with longer fur. Um, with all the other ones, it's like you can kind of pretend that the fur like isn't fur because it's short. But when you've got a cat with longer fur, then you have to decide how you're going to depict that. Um, and I wasn't very comfortable with it, and I feel like it shows. Love this grumpy little guy. Some of these, like this one and this one, I think are full speed paints on my channel. So you could watch me paint the whole thing in like six times speed if you want. Maybe that one too. Okay, so between this one and this one, I didn't paint for two months. I don't remember why at the time. I'd have to look at the dates, but I could have just, you know, got overwhelmed for some silly reason and then didn't want to do it for two months. So I started back and I don't think they're that different. They're a little more, a little more attention paid to the actual painting before Moving in with pencils, a little looser. This is when I officially switch back to acrylics only and no more gouache. Um, I like how sort of pastel and purple this one is. I never really achieved that again, but I feel like I did a really good job being really loose with the painting in this one. A little variety of colors. Great. Another month long break. The following three were apparently the only three I painted in March of this year. This one I'm not a huge fan of again, I think because I didn't I didn't really understand how to depict longer fur became a problem. And I only did two in May, apparently. This one I really like. I mean, maybe it's just the pink background, but I think it looks really soft and sweet. So after I came back, I think after May, I don't think I painted anything. And then I don't know if I painted anything in June either. I had kind of a weird time. Um, I don't know. I just get really weird about my birthday every year and it usually triggers some silly goofy depression where I have to just um, not do anything for like six weeks. So I came back in July, started working again, and it was pretty consistent because I really wanted to push to finish the project. I really like this one with the purples and the black. I tried really hard to sort of keep the philosophy I was told in my college art classes is that don't use black to paint black because it'll, my camera overheated. Did it? Nope, it didn't. Anyway, <laughs> don't use black to depict black because then it'll like muddy up your painting. I had one professor that we weren't even allowed to have black paint in her studio. Um, so it's kind of stuck with me. And I think, you know, I don't know, use black if you want, who cares? You can do whatever you want. It's art for a reason, but I think it's fun because then 
you get stuff like purple in there. It's kind of pink. I started like semi-intentionally like letting more the pink show through, giving it a little more texture, I think. This one's still one of my favorites. I don't know, it's just a favorite. I think I was really on fire that day. I painted a good cat, turned out good, felt good, was happy. This one's pretty cute too. So between that one and this one, I took another month off for some reason. Um, and this is kind of the home stretch. This is the last where it's like, I feel like this last batch is pretty consistent. Like they look pretty similar. I don't know. But yeah, definitely more loose painting, more, more texture with the color pencils. I really fell in love with doing that. Um, I don't know. I just really like that style. It kind of, in, and this is, I'm definitely not tooting my own horn because I don't think it's comparable, but I've always really liked that style. I'll have to look up the artist, but I don't know, whoever used to paint like movie posters, thinking for like, you know, like the old Indiana Jones posters and stuff like that. I'll put it on the screen, I'll look it up. But I think they also maybe did like a combination of paint and pencil or else did a lot of like little strokes with the paint that kind of looked like that. And I don't know, I feel like part of me is always trying to emulate that style just for nostalgia purposes. This one's one of my favorites. I think, however, it ended up, it he almost kind of looks kind of glowy. I don't know. And I think the texture really worked really well on this. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. This one, the drawing's a little off, but it's still fine. This is another one of my favorites. Um, I don't know, I just, I, I'm glad that I was able to sort of let go of the idea that like allowing the pink to show through was like sloppy or unfinished because who cares if it looks sloppy or unfinished? It's art, it's supposed to look however I want it to look. Um, so I really like it, I like how it looks. This one, I, I think I kind of had the same problem that I was having earlier in the project with browns and blacks, like how to paint gray. Um, I have my, it's difficult to mix a gray, but I also have my, my nasty leftovers container where I put, I scrape everything off my palette at the end of the painting session and put it in there. And that's kind of my gray container. So it's kind of where I start. So I don't know if I'm ruining my own time by starting with like a muddy, nasty mix of who knows what and then trying to shift it either blue or red or whatever. Um, I'm also just not a fan of this orange color I did in the back. I don't know why I did that. But good. This is another one of my favorites. Um, I don't know. I just really like the sort of like choppy angles I ended up doing around the edges. And I like the purpley, purpley black. This one I kind of struggled with because you can tell like the eyes are kind of disproportionate, but I swear to you, the, the cat itself had like one eye that was smaller than the other. So I was almost like, should I paint this cat? Because everyone's gonna think I just made the eyes the wrong size, but it's kind of accurate. Just trust me. And in the end, it's the last one. So for the last one, I actually kind of intentionally chose like a straight on view, um, not at any angle or anything to sort of 
be similar to the angle of the original painting. Um, just to show like how much my process and my style, if you can call it, and my skill or confidence with using the materials changed. Um, and as you can see, they changed. Um, but I'm actually really excited with what I'm doing now and I'm gonna continue hopefully, I don't know, maybe do another hundred, but I also wanna start painting other stuff too because I don't wanna only paint cats. I mean, maybe I do, why not? But, but yeah, that's the whole thing. That's a hundred paintings. So if someone like me who gets emotional over nothing all the time and stops painting for like weeks to months at a time um, and takes 18 months to finish a hundred day challenge can finish the hundred day challenge, you can too. So yeah, if you made it to the end of the video, thanks. Thanks for being here. Um, you can check out my Instagram to see all the individual cats and what else I'm working on now. And I have almost, where is it? I've almost filled this sketchbook. I literally have like two or three pages left. So I'm gonna do a sketchbook tour when that's done. So look forward to that. But yeah, thanks for watching.